we're going to be working on a 150S, though these techniques that are, I'm going to be showing you are going to apply to all the pulse arc uh, machines. So what we're going to do is we just have some stainless steel tabs here, and we're going to just do a seam right down the middle. So what I like to do, generally speaking, whenever I'm using the pulse arc machines, is I like grounding whatever's bigger, but since this is the same size, it doesn't really matter. And so, I'm just going to hold it flush, use my fingers to have it be really flush. And with this particular weld, we want to just put the sharp of the needle on the sharpest part, just like that. And if we put one on either side, then now we can start welding without having our fingers in there. Because sometimes the, the welds do get a little warm, but this just helps us also keep our parts straight. And so I'm gonna I'm gonna weld it like this a little bit so you guys can see. Whenever I, I weld, I do one right there, and then the, it makes a little tiny crevice where the crack is. Let me see if I can zoom in on that. So there's a little crack right here. And so that's where I want to put my next weld, and I'm gonna follow that all the way down. And when I do that, that's going to create an overlapping weld. And the final product will look professional and nice because the spot size is going to remain the same. And so the overlapping weld will look even and when you do that as well as it makes it a very strong weld. And I'm just going to go over this area just one more time so that we can In essence, if you if you run into a situation where you go over a previous weld, oh sorry, if I go over a previous weld, I just go on the outside of that ring. And then you have a pretty even, good looking weld. And then you can repeat on the other side, but we're going to move on. So that is a, a butt weld. So right against each other. So, the technique changes a little bit when when we get to this point. And I'm just going to use the grounding clip just to pinch it on there so I don't have to deal with it. So, instead of going up on it like this, cuz then it's not going to share the energy between here and here, we want to hit it at 45 degree angles like that. That's going to give us our best result. Now there are some times where you can't do that, so just do your best. But the, this is ideal technique for something like this. Just come in on the side, about 45 degree angle. Again, sometimes if there's a, an extra gap there, you might have to hit it a couple times. But we can follow that same pattern where we just go into that little crack that it makes. And the resulting weld will look smooth and professional. So now, maybe we'll zoom in on it. There we go. So very nice. In some instances, there will be times where you need to do fill wire. So I'm going to show you two different instances. Some where you'll want to put it right here and use fill wire to fill out this entire crack right here. And this is thicker wire, so. Sometimes you'll want to use 
fill wire that fits the exact same size as your crack. So in this instance, I would probably want to use fill wire that's about half the size. Or sometimes you'll want to just put wire on the surface. So I'm going to show you how to do the surface one first. So we're just going to ground it near or somewhere near where we're going to be working. And we're going to follow the same technique that we're going to do here, just pretending that this is this little edge is the wire. So we're going to come in at 45 degree angle, just like this. And hit, hit that wire right there. And then we're going to hit it right here. And because I have it whacked down, I'm going to weld it on the other side of the wire, on both sides. And what this is going to do is it's going to hold it. So now I can actually break that off right at my weld site. And then we can finish up our welds as we did before. Just following, following that, that pattern so that we have a nice smooth weld bead. And as you can see, I'm, I'm holding both parts. I'm holding this grounding clip. I'm not going to get shocked. You can see I'm going to put my finger nice and close. This isn't going to burn me or anything. The heat is very localized to the weld site. The only thing that would probably burn you is the parts get warm, so keep that in mind. So that's that one side. I'm going to finish this finish this other side up and speed it up so we can we can go through it. Okay, now that we've finished up, see on both sides and I did both end, ends as well. So that looks really good. Sometimes what happens though, if I can have it focus properly, is it will make kind of a sharp peak on your fill wire or your surface here. Um, it didn't do it too bad here, but I'm going to show you after you do all that, then you can put welds across the top to smooth it out. And I like turning it up. We've been on 13 watt seconds. I'm going to turn it up to, we'll say, uh, somewhere around 20 um, for how big this wire is. I think this wire is, I'll, I'll double check that and put that right here. So now that it's fully secured to the plate that's below it, we can hit it on the top. And what that's going to do is just smooth it out. And I wouldn't recommend doing this for your weld just because it's not going to bond it to the, the area below. It's just going to smooth it out. In some instances, that's what you need. You need it to be nice and smooth. Also, you can see I've just welded, but I'm able to touch this. It cools down quite fast. It's warm, but so now it's a nice soft, much softer edge than it was before. All right, now we're going to drop this back down to about 13 watt seconds like we were before. And we're going to apply the same technique that we were before, 45 degree angle. Let's see if I can put it in an angle that's a little bit more 
Let me just hit it with one so I can hit, get you guys the, the angle that's going to be best for you. Alright, so we're going to hold the, the wire down. Okay, so 45 degree angle. I apologize for my finger. Just what we got to do. Okay, and the reason why I do my starting point and my end point is the heat will distort this wire as I go just because it heats up. And so I want to make sure that my starting point and my end point are exactly where I want them to be. And then I want to weld it. And since this is a shallower gap, our 45 degree angle between the gap isn't really 45 degrees. It's just you want to match. See that? So if we're in this angle, 45 degrees, it's perfect. But since this is about level, we really need to go about here. And this doesn't have to be exactly this, it's just this is ideal, right? I was actually waiting for this to happen. So we've done quite a few welds, and this tip has gotten less sharp. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to sharpen this. We're going to take off this cone, loosen, and I really put this on there. There we go. Pull this out. We're going to get our sharpener here. And what we're going to do is we're going to put it on the back side because it's going to spin this way. And so that's going to allow us to comfortably hold it, okay? And what we're going to want to do is have it like this, okay? Not like this, but like this. This allows the formation to be in a spiral shape as it's coming down. And that helps get the energy um, delivered to your part better. So I'm going to speed that up. So I'm going to have it somewhere between a 30 and a 45 degree angle. That's my preferred. You can have it more shallow if you'd like. And I kind of check it for sharpness just because I can't do this with the camera. And I'm just slowly spinning it while it's doing that. And as you can see, you might be able to see those little spirals. So that's going to help us deliver that energy a lot better. So I'm going to slide that back in there, just like that. And some of the older machines, they'll have this engraved on there. But if you don't, what you'll want to do is put this cone right against the nut. And if this is touching the out the bottom bezel, then you're golden. Tighten up that nut, slide it on, and boom, perfect every single time. So now we can get back, and then our welds will will produce a lot nicer. And so you can figure out what what interval is going to work for you. So now that I've done that, those double welds, I'm going to wiggle this back and forth until we break that wire right at our weld site. And I'm just going to come in at the shared angle, so it's about there. There's actually quite a bit of a gap here. so Sometimes this will happen where your gap is so big, you might actually have to turn up your energy in order to get enough melting to bridge that gap. But I was able to do that. So we're going to do it again, follow this all the way along, and then we'll do the, the upside. And I like doing one side at a time, um, unless I have to zigzag back and forth. But I like doing this because it will hold the wire in place. Now the other one, I'll speed it up a little bit so we're not watching. There's a bunch of lines. So, 
pretty, pretty welds, right? So our welds are looking pretty, pretty good. But just like before, it made a kind of a, a peak right there. Let's see if I can get it to focus. It's a little less pronounced than the other one, but there is still a peak. So we, we do have a choice. We can leave it like that and be happy. Or we can just run some other welds on it. I'm just going to turn it up to about 20 watt seconds for this particular. And then I'm just going to run run over the top of it and I'll speed that up for you. And we're just gonna put welds right over the middle of it like we did before. And we turn up our energy so that it spreads the, the energy out further which makes a bigger melting point. Goodness gracious. And so it makes a smooth transition. See, it's just absolutely perfectly smooth. And, it, and again, it just results in a nice, clean weld. And we're, we're doing the same technique on top of this wire as we did at the very first weld. Just making a weld and going to the very edge of the weld, making another, and so on and so forth until we get to the end. And sometimes when you do welds on one side on a butt weld, you can see, though strong, I can bend it. So it's useful. It's useful to do more welds on the back side. So it's only four welds, right? Pretty quick and dirty. So I had to do that quite hard. You can see there's indentation on my thumbs. So keep that in mind. But if I were to do another bead, I wouldn't be able to break that, that weld. So there you go. If you have any other questions, please let us know. We're here to help and provide more service for your particular projects.